welcome back to my channel. My name is Diana and I'm the creator of Money Boss Mama, where I teach women how to save money, pay off debt, shift their money mindsets, and rock a successful budget. So this year, during the craziest year ever, I became debt free, paying off a total of $16,576.95. So I wanted to do a video just sharing how I was able to do it during a pandemic without a side hustle. Um, and I did not do any crazy hocus pocus tricks. I feel like what I did was super basic, super simple. Um, so hopefully you all are able to find some tips and inspiration and seeing everyday things as opportunities. So without making this super, super long, let's go ahead and get into number one. Okay, so the first thing that I did was cut my expenses. So my original debt-free date was actually February of 2021, but when the year 2020 hit, I was like, I'm over it. I needed to be over. I am completely jaded. I am lacking motivation. So I went back to my budget to see how I could pay off debt in 2020 versus 2021. And I will say that my budget is pretty much bare bones and I always feel like going back to it like there's nothing else that I could possibly cut out or reduce but every time that I go back I will say that I do find something and I normally go straight to my non-essentials which are those that are not necessary so like personal funds beauty shopping eating out memberships and subscriptions things like that things that you do not need to live and i was just started cutting and reducing so i opted to reduce my personal funds and i dropped it down to a hundred dollars every two weeks so two hundred dollars a month this is for me and my kids so three people on a hundred dollars every two weeks and I also reduced my grocery budget, which was a stretch, but I started incorporating cheaper meals into what I would plan out to make over the weeks um, and just to help keep the cost down. And I know that saving and investing are like really touchy subjects in the personal finance community but i did lower my savings contributions uh to like nothing i was saving like 55 dollars per paycheck but now i will say i did have a couple of months worth of living expenses put back and when i say a couple i mean literally two so i did feel like you know a little secure dropping my savings contributions down to such a small amount and I felt secure in my job because unfortunately my job is one of those jobs that kind of benefited from the pandemic in a way and I have always been someone who just moves based on crazy crazy faith as well so that played a huge role and I'm like let's go for it now i will say that i did lower my retirement savings as well i dropped those contributions down to like two percent but i did look through my 401k documents uh just to see if i had to make a certain contribution in order to get the employer match i did not find any of that so i dropped it down to two percent they were still matching that 2%. Of course, it wasn't like the maximum, uh, but it was still something. It was better than nothing. And this is not the first time that I have done this. I do not do this for longer than a year, maybe like 10 months max. The last that I, the last time that I did it, I was attacking my credit card debt. Um, and I did that for like eight to 10 months. And this time it was probably a little less than 10 months. But anytime that I reduce my savings contributions, that pushes me to get my ish together and hurry up and get the goal done because I am missing out on money. And I do take into consideration factors such as my age, the type of debt that I am attacking, is it high interest? 
um, as well as the time frame and I never go over a year mark but I will say that to me personally for my journey um, this made sense to me I would rather miss 10 to 12 months worth of earnings to become debt free and now that I am debt free of course the first thing that I did was raise my retirement contributions up again but I have never been super conventional and I if I had a chance to do it all over again I totally would the second thing that I did was take advantage of my employers PTO sell back program and if you watch any of my budget with me videos then you have probably heard me talk about this a few times my employer and I am super grateful they allow us to sell anything over 80 hours worth of PTO so we have to have at least 80 hours and then anything over that we can sell back and so I was probably an employee for three years before I realized that we even had this option but since I was on a debt-free journey I was not traveling I was not going anywhere so I was sitting on like a pile of PTO and I will say I am one of those employees or I was one of those employees who felt like taking PTO would make me look like a bad worker they would think I was lazy that I didn't want to work yada 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 so I did have quite a bit of PTO that I was sitting on when I first realized that we could sell it back and then once I learned about the PTO sell back program I was like this is a strategy and y'all when you are dedicated to your goal and determined to hit your goal you are going to start seeing regular everyday things as opportunities so for this for the PTO sell back like to me this was an opportunity to pay off debt I would wait until I would get at least 80 hours worth of PTO then I would sell it back and this year I did do a total of two PTO sellbacks um, and so anything extra that was added to my paycheck I put that full amount I added it in with my regular debt payment and I put the full amount of the extra money towards whatever debt that I was working on at the time and this helped me to accelerate my debt-free journey the third thing that I did was take advantage of extra money and if you are not new here you know that leveraging extra money has literally been my number one strategy in paying off debt because I am not a super high earner so sometimes my with my payments it I felt like my debt-free journey was moving at a snail's pace but when I came across extra money I saw that as a way to make up for lost time and just move my journey forward a lot faster so in February I got my tax refund and I used the majority of that thing on my debt and I have been giving up my tax refunds for about eight years now um, since ever since I had my daughter I've been giving up my tax refunds so by this time it was second nature so adding my tax refund to my regular debt payment I was able to pay off $3,964.03 that was in February and then in March my employer gives salaried employees their incentives so long as our goals have been met and we did reach our goals so I did get my incentive in March and I used my incentive as an extra debt payment so adding that with my regular debt payments I was able to apply $3,328.68 to my debts and in April I believe I that's when we got our stimulus check and I saw that stimulus check as a way to pay off debt a lot faster so I applied the majority of that thing to debt as well and I applied a little portion to savings and adding that to my debt payments in April allowed me to make a payment of $1,386 so as you can see when you see extra money as an opportunity to pay off debt or hit your financial goals versus an opportunity to get things that you want it is going to help push your journey along a lot faster and a lot further than if you did not use it in a strategic way and I will be the first person to say 
I freaking hate side hustling. I hate side hustling. I did side hustle for a couple of years because I had no choice. I um, I needed extra money, but I was completely miserable side hustling. And so whenever I put down the side hustle, I told myself I was going to have to find another way to make this work because my mental health comes first and this is not working. And so after that, I began to see little things as a way to achieve debt freedom and using any type of extra money that I came across was a huge win-win for me. The fourth thing that I did was take advantage of the pandemic. So yes, in a way, I finessed the pandemic. And before you are like, girl, what the heck are you talking about? Let me explain. So when the pandemic first hit, I was like, crap, I am going to have to prolong my debt-free journey. And I was panicking because everyone else was panicking. And hello, I have never been in a pandemic before. And the unknown is super scary. So I was seeing everyone stop their debt payments and just start throwing money into their savings. And I'm like, okay, well, that's, that's what I should do. So I started to go that route. But then... When I learned that, you know, the student loan payments were going to be suspended as well as the interest rate, I saw that as a way out because at that time I just had my student loans left and I had been looking for a way to pay off my debt faster and, you know, I felt like I was like, girl, this is it. This is you. You asked me for a way. This is your way. It definitely was not. Uh, wrapped up the way that I thought it was going to be but still I have to move strategically and I saw this as a way to pay off my student loans faster because I did not know in 2021 if they were going to extend the benefit so I was like screw it you know I'm, I'm walking on faith again and I was like I am going to continue making my student loan payment and y'all not having that high interest was like a huge advantage for me because not only was I able to knock out my principal balance a lot faster it also helped with my motivation because I was seeing the balances move faster as well since my full payment was going towards the loan so it was like the debt snowball on steroids so it kept me motivated and it pushed me to apply more money to my student loans to get it down even more and also when i put my son back in daycare um I, I waited a little while to see how the pandemic was going but eventually i did make the decision to put him back in daycare part-time and so the worker was like you know hey essential workers are getting their child care paid for by DHS. Here's an application. And I threw the application on the desk because I did not see myself as essential. And one day I was crunching numbers, just trying to see how I can free up extra money. I needed an additional around $100 in order to seal the deal to be debt free in 2020. And I was looking for another way to free up my money. So I looked at the application and I'm like, what, what, what can it hurt? And I am that person, if it's a denial in writing, I will do whatever to avoid it. And that was the reason why I did not even fill out the application. But when you have a goal to hit, you've got to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So I'm like, girl, if you get denied, you get denied, but it's not going to hurt you to try. And a DHS worker, she emailed me for um, additional information. So I'm like, okay, I'm not denied. And then she was like, well, just send me X, Y, Z, and then we can get your application process. So I was approved and shocked. But I will be completely transparent. I don't pay an arm and a leg for childcare or didn't. Um, my great aunt has been at this specific child care center that my son goes to for, I want to say about two decades. So I am under her employee discount, which is a huge, huge blessing. And I'm super grateful for it. Um, so I was only freed up like $250, but still 
I think we get into this place where we feel like if it's not thousands of dollars, it's not worthwhile and it's not really making a difference. But I only needed an additional $100 to seal the deal. And being freed of $250 really allowed me to uh, pay off my debt a lot faster, which is how I was able to pay off debt in November. So even if you're making a small amount or you feel like something is not really making a difference, those small wins are going to build upon themselves and ultimately they are going to be what gets you to your goal. And I am very aware that 2020 has been a super rough year for a lot of people. What it has done to me, I feel like I can't even complain because it's so small compared to the grand scheme of things. Um, I know people have lost their homes, they've lost their jobs, they've lost their cars, they're struggling to put food on the table. So I know that and I am extremely blessed to have been able to do what I did this year and I never ever ever want anyone to feel less than. So please know that my story is not necessarily your story and that is okay. But these are the four main things that helped me become debt free and pay off over $16,000 during a pandemic. I hope that some of you are inspired to find opportunities and what seem like regular, schmegular, everyday things because they do truly help to make a difference. And for those who have been paying off debt this year, leave below in the comments how you have been going about it just for those who are gonna be scrolling through and maybe looking for additional tips and strategies. But I hope that you all subscribe for more videos like this one and I will catch you all next week.